Dr. Alan Mondoza is the founder and executive director of the Henry Jackson Society. Good to have you with us, Alan, once again. Uh, you had a chance to listen to Grant Shapps. What did you make of his address? Well, I think it uh, was a combination factor of explaining, obviously, what's happening uh, right now in the Red Sea and, and the Gulf, and also sort of making the, the, I suppose, the bolder case for a transformation, if you like, of um, of the UK's defence policy over the next few years. But clearly, what he's saying is that there's increased volatility, there are increased threats, and we have to respond to them. And I think that's, you know, commonly understood. It takes money, though, doesn't it? Was was it effectively a plea to the treasurer to the treasury to give him more money? Well, yes, I think it, I think it was. Um, I think it's clear again that everyone can see the world is volatile, the world is uncertain. Uh, this is not likely to change in, in our favour in the next few years, unless, of course, we invest appropriately in ensuring there is stability uh, through the defence mechanisms that require to provide that. So, yes, he's saying, look, if you want a safer world, you've got to spend money to get there. And the money he's, um, the budget he secured last, well, at least he, he secured the money, I guess, some, several days before, but it was publicly announced on Friday. Two and a half billion pounds this coming financial year for Ukraine. I mean, that presumably will take money out of other areas of defence spending. Well, I think it probably won't, actually, because you know, what we're trying to do with the Ukrainian situation is enhance spending in total. I think the key to this is to understand that there are obviously um, immediate spending needs and then the longer term needs of a up to date 20, almost mid 21st century military now. And the two things need to go hand in hand. But clearly, what is essential is the world is getting more dangerous. We need more money to sort of prop up the defence side to make sure it doesn't get still more dangerous and we can control that situation. And that is what the Defence Secretary is, I think, commentary needs to be understood in the light of. Recruitment is uh, an issue in many countries when it comes to the military. Do you think the UK is facing a challenge in actually persuading people that a life in service is one that's worth doing? I'm not sure that's you know that that's a, a fair assumption in the UK. I mean, we've always had a very good record in this regard of um, of firstly having a respect for the armed forces and the people who serve in them. And I think because the numbers are not massive, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands, millions of people in the armed force. I don't think it's necessarily a problem. But what we do want to have are, of course, the best and the brightest. Um, it should be the case that armed forces are not uh, you know sort of having um, uh, they should have the choice basically of everyone coming in, and that is a challenge, of course to see you know, why people should put themselves into that situation as opposed to many others. And that's, again, I think the sense of having a country that's willing to invest in its military will drive the best and brightest to go, yes, I think I can put my efforts in there. They will be recognised and rewarded. I know we're talking principally about military matters today, um, Alan, but uh, as you look to tomorrow and the agenda of this Rwanda bill trying to go through second reading, um, do you think that the Prime Minister's strategy of presenting the bill as it is and resisting all attempts to amend it, do you think that'll work for him? Well, he's obviously going to be facing some uh, heavy duty sniping um, from to put like, it family, families. I think. Yes. Five families. Um, <laughs> he's got that side. He's also got the other side saying, well, if you give in to them, it's happening. Look, this is a very, very narrow passage to go through, obviously. I think the, the key to this is that. Uh, I think the Prime Minister will be looking at, obviously, the strength of the vote. He needs to get the vote through. That's the most important thing. And I think he needs to chart a course where he can bring the maximum number of people uh, on board, as it were, to his sort of boats policy uh, in order to get it through um, uh, through uh, Parliament. It, it's a tough one, though. Look, you know, whichever way he goes, he's going to face some sniping. But it's going to be, as with every other vote in Parliament, it's a numbers game. And number 10 will be doing the numbers, looking at what do we need to get the bill through? Because the worst thing that would happen with the bill not getting through at all.